Ladies and gentlemen, this is Joe's Classic Video Games back with another cool pinball repair video for you today. Now, if you didn't see the first two videos we've done on this machine, we did one video where we kind of looked through it, cleaned it up, uh, looked at the, the back glass, all of that. This is Bally's Medusa pinball machine. And uh, we got the power, we worked on the power supply a little bit, and we got the lights to light up on it. And then we did another video where the play field was just covered in dirt and filth. And we went through and meticulously cleaned it, waxed it, replaced all the light bulbs, replaced all the rubber rings, and we've got it looking pretty good now. But the thing does not work, okay? So it doesn't do nothing. So we're going to start working on the boards in the back box to see if we can get the game to boot up. Now we're going to cheat a little bit because we have a brand new uh, Alltech MPU board that we're going to put in it. Um, so we'll do that here in a minute. But the first thing that uh, you usually do whenever you're doing electronics, so if you're, if you're working on a Bally of this era, it doesn't have to be a Medusa, this is a Bally-35, they call it, MPU, uh, which they used up till about 1983 or so, maybe probably late 83. Uh, if you're working on one of these, the first thing you want to do is work on the power supply. We did that in our first video, so go back and watch those if you haven't. And then the next thing that the power does is it comes up here to this solenoid driver board. Now we've removed this top connector because that's where the power runs in. So we've basically disabled all the boards by doing that. We, the reason that we worked on the power supply first is because we wanted to get the light bulbs working on the play field. So as we shopped it, we could tell if the bulbs were burnt out. We've got one out back there because we've got a bad socket. We're going to work on that later. So the next thing to work on is this solenoid driver board. It has three areas. Okay, This area down here controls all of the solenoids. This area here controls the high voltage for the displays. And this area here takes the 12 volts and turns it into 5 volts. The, the high voltage for the displays goes over here to the displays and makes them work. The solenoid driver... Uh, the MPU controls to control the kickers and everything on the play field. And then the 5 volt section takes the 12 volt from the power supply, regulates it to 5 volts, and then controls the MPU, the lamp board, the soundboard. Sometimes the soundboard has its own 5 volt section. We'll see that here in a little bit. Uh, the auxiliary lamp board, and even sends 5 volts over to the displays. So that 5 volt. Uh, section is the most important part of the whole machine electronically. So uh, we're going to pull this board out and rebuild it a little bit, service it a little bit, get it where it's reliable and we can test that 5 volts and then we will uh, we'll put it back in and move on to our MPU. So we're going to pull this out first. This, this solenoid driver board is basically the same. It has different part numbers and stuff but it's the same through all the Bally machines and all of the early Stern machines. The early Bally machines and early Stern solid state machines. So uh, we'll take it out of the cabinet and put it on the bench. All right, so Joey has reflowed the connectors on the side. Show him your beautiful reflow job, Joe. So basically, when you pull those connectors off over time, it breaks the solder joints. So Joe's went back in, reflowed them, add a little more solder to them. The ones over here are particularly uh, touchy because they're much closer together. Those are 0.100 pitch. That's how far it is from one pin to another. And these other ones are 0.156 of an inch uh, pitch. Okay, so we reflowed that. Now the next thing that we're going to do is this is the, the 5 volt filter cap and the thing's old. So we're cutting it out. We're going to put a new one in. Show them the old one, Joe. What size is that sucker? 11, 9? 11,000. So it's 11,000. What's that word there, Joe? UF. 11,000 microfarad uh, 20 volt cap. So we're going to replace that with one at that size or a little bigger. It's pretty common on these machines that people replace them with a little bit bigger one. So we're going to dig in the drawer here and see what we've got. All right. So we've got, we're putting a 15,000 35 volt in there. You don't necessarily have to increase it. The reason we're replacing it is because the other cap's just so old. Um, and since it's a filter capacitor, it's going to give you trouble. Joe's carefully soldering the wires back on. This is not a solder instruction video, people. If you do it better, I'm proud of you. Okay, so that's that. It's really not rocket science here, folks. 
Now we'll put some more zip ties on it to hold that sucker in place. We're basically just trying to upgrade the five volt um, regulation a little bit, filtering at least. Those are those bum zip ties. These zip ties are not the best, people. We've only got 885 of them left. Yeah, we're going to use all of we them bought, now. We bought a thousand pack. We've got 885 left. Now we've got 884 left. We're going to do one other thing to this filter capacitor. go we're going to upgrade the ground to the filter capacitor we're basically helping to tie a bunch of the grounds in place so we need to find out which one of these two traces is the ground I do believe it's the one on the left there oh you don't need wire on this one no. which, which pin is the ground <laughs> okay scrape a little bit of the metal just below that on the trace off the film off blow it that one See that? Uh, this one? Yeah, you're gonna jumper it from here to here. All right, and then make a little solder bridge. Basically, we're connecting the ground of the five volt to the ground of the rest of the board. We're trying to tie all the grounds together. Okay, because if you don't, what happens is the entire 5 volt filter runs through that one pin there. If anything happens, if there's any corrosion or anything, you lose the ground on your 5 volt filter. Not really a great design. But by tying it to the other grounds on the on the uh, machine, now you've got several ground points where it comes on and off the board. So You're basically just tying all of the grounds together from the rectifier board, the, the grounds of the different sections of the solenoid board, even the, the the grounds that that goes out to, it's it's tying everything together basically at the solenoid board and the rectifier board. Okay, so that's that one. We're going to do one more jumper, Joe. Right here on the end, this filter here on the front is the display filter. And it's got the same problem. If you look, that's the ground. And it runs over here. It connects to a resistor. And it runs way over here to one pin. So you can get like some flickering on your displays. So what we do is we make a little bit of uh, the mask go bye-bye right there. This is high-tech, people. This is how the pros do it, okay? And then you put a jumper from there to there, and you just hide the ground into the, uh, into the other one. Now, if you're saying, oh, you shouldn't do that, I want you to notice that the ground that we're tying to is grounded to the plane in the back box. So they were already tying all the grounds together, they just didn't do a very good job there. On those, those two pins go back to the rectifier board where they're tied together to the frame of the rectifier board. So we're just tying them together here a little bit farther down the line. This is the only real upgrade you have to do to the board. And you don't even have to do it. We just do it because uh, it's worked very well for us. We learned uh, this way of doing it from Clay at PinRepair.com. That's how he did it. Um, and he still tells people to do it that way. And so that's how I still do it. It's worked well for us over the years. I believe John Robertson um, from Flippers.com is a proponent of this too. He was the guy that figured out about the... Uh, got the ground problems. They actually even do a few more. They uh, they tie some other stuff together, but we usually just do these two. Oh, wait a minute. We got one more. All right. Now, if you'll flip it back over, Joe. Up here on the top, the 5 volt, the 12 volt comes in at test point 5. The 5 volt is there at test point one. It runs off the board and through a jumper to get down here to test point three to power all of these chips with the five volt. So if that 
if either one of those pins is a mess, you get problems with your solenoids where they can lock one. So what we do is we tie test point one to test point three. So basically you're just making, a, there's a little jumper here on the connector. We're just making the jumper on the board. So turn it back over and put a jumper on test point one to test point uh, three there below it. Not that one. That one you don't want to mess with. That's the 12 volt coming in. Test point one to test point what? It's uh, that one, the second one, mm -hmm. to that one. Oh. There you go. Reflow this one for good measure. Just in case. They're going to wonder why we have an old monitor on our table here. That's coming up in another video. We're working on several videos at once here, people. We're multitasking. People always complain that I don't show enough of the work. So now we got Joey working it, and I'm just holding the camera. Now, Joe, when this came in, you were the one that uh, uh, troubleshooted this game, troubleshot this game. What was wrong with it? It was broke. Yeah, it was broke. Yeah. Should have known. Look at that. He just he-manned it. I think all the comments we're going to get telling us how we should do this better. Why don't you get some wire strippers? <laughs> <laughs> We've got wire strippers, people. I've got 50 of them, but I don't want to get up and move 10 feet. I know. we got to <laughs> walk all the way over there and get them. It's all the way over there. I ain't doing that. All right, so you've tied them together. Okay, now, think about what we've done, people. We replaced the filter cap on the 5 volt. We reflowed all the connectors. Down here on the solenoids, we reflowed all the connectors. And then here in the high voltage, we reflowed the connector and we, we uh, modded the ground on this filter capacitor on it. And I've had people say, well, why don't you replace that one? It's because if you if this one causes problems with the 5 volts, the game will lock up. If this one causes problems on the display, you might get some flickering on the display. It's, it doesn't hurt anything. right? So, uh, And it's a pretty decent little cap, usually. So unless it looks damaged or whatever, you can just leave it. Okay, uh, so the only thing that we've got to do now, Joe, is test stuff. So mm -hmm. turn it back over, and we'll get the multimeter. Let me go grab it. Joe has found the multimeter. Now this is the one that we know works good because it's real dirty. Yep. Okay, so we've set it on diode check, which is how you check diodes and transistors. And all we're really going to check is we're going to check um, we're going to check the, the transistors on the display, just to make sure none of them are shorted. Let's try that first, Joe. If you look real clear, careful, a lot of times it'll say base collector emitter. So all you're trying to do is see if any of them are shorted to each other. They're not. And usually if one of them is shorted, the other ones will test shorted too. Try it the other way and see if we... Try reversing the pins and see if we get a different reading. Is that the is that the transistor? That might be the voltage adjustment. Voltage yep. adjustment. Well, that ain't it. I look for the triangles. Yeah, see how they're the in a row. Yeah, he's actually right. See, see, that's a transistor. See, there's another that's one there. a transistor. See how it says BCE? It's telling you base collector emitter. All right. Well, look at the high def of the, the, the manliness of this fluke multimeter. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Now, see how he's, show him how you just did that, Joe. He's got the black probe on the middle, red probe on the top. Okay, and then he's going to reverse it. Well, you don't have to do it that way. Just that, uh, the way you were doing it. There you go. So he's getting 0.493 on that one. Okay, that's a voltage drop. So basically most of these will have a similar voltage drop. So that one's got 0.521 and 0.495. Now, you don't even have to know if that's right. It's just they're all the same. 
So if every freaking one of them's bad, that's one thing. Or you just keep going until you find one that's bad. So he's just comparing one to the next, one to the next, one to the next, and going through it. We're looking for one that's shorted or that's open. So shorted would be less than about 0.1. If we, if we got one that was like 0.2, we might look at it because it shouldn't really be like that. It should be somewhere between 0.4 and 0.7 or so. So he's just running right through it. Now if you got one that was really high, like 0.9 or above, well then it's probably open. That, that transistor's not going to work. If you've got one that's shorted, that's less than 0.1 or so, that transistor's probably always going to be locked on. Oh no! There's one! I was just making sure he's paying attention. Ah, uh, he's cheating! He's cheating, and it was right on time, too. So show him what a shorted one would look like, Joe. Oh, look, it's shorted together. That one's bad. Take it out of the game and throw it away. Show him what an open one would look like. Look, that one's open. It says open line. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is too easy, people. All right, so that's so we're basically we're going through, and a transistor is, is essentially, you know, I don't need everybody correcting me, but essentially it's two, it's two diodes in a row, basically, right? So we're just checking a diode and then checking a diode the other way. It's a, it's a voltage drop. It's a, uh, a gate, basically, kind of. So we're, that's what we're testing. We're testing all of the gates inside the transistors, and he's done. All right? Now, show him one other thing, Joe. If you look right here, this is on the high, the, um, high voltage. See the C, E, and G? If you test that one, it, you can't really test it in circuit. So show them what happens if you test that one, Joe. Uh, the big one there, over to the right with the two screws. There you go. So see, look, it's a point two. Well, you might think, oh, man, that's, that's bad. No, it's just the way that thing's installed in the, in the board. So you can't always check them in circuit. That one, if you took it out, it would say point four or five or something like that. But now it says point two zero six because there's a big old freaking resistor in there somewhere. Uh, that's connected across it. Try one of the other connections, Joe. The other one's the screw, actually. No, I mean on that same one. See that uh, See that screw there? That's one of them. So see, there's your regular drop. And then if you move over to the other one, it's got the regular drop. And then reverse the, the things and see what it does. That one's up over 0.5. And that one's up over 0.5. So, you know... If I was going to guess, I'd say that's probably fine. But you can't really tell because you get weird uh, measurements on some of it while it's in the game. So we're going to clean it up a little bit, and then we're going to put it back in the machine, and uh, we're going to test the 5 volts and some of the voltages on it. All right, folks, we've popped it back in there. We've unplugged the other boards just to make sure that in case the 5 volts is off that we don't fry anything. So we've plugged in this top connector up here, which is where the 12 volts comes from, and also where the high voltage for the high voltage uh, section comes from, the unregulated voltages. And then it's also where the regulated voltages go out. So we'll see what we get. So I'm going to turn it on carefully, and we're going to have Joe check it. All right, Joe, right there in the bottom left, there's a ground plug. See it? Uh, it says GND. Yep. So put your black lead there. Try not to touch anything else with it. That'll work. And then you're going to take your red lead, put it on DC, and check that top, uh, uh, go over to the right where the 12 comes in, by that connector that's connected, and that top test point. I think it's test point 5, maybe. Nothing. Your ground might be not making good contact. There we go. 13.4 whatever. So go down to the one below it. 5.17. That's pretty much perfect. Okay. And then if you check the one below it that you tied to. There's a bunch of them. 5.17. So that's basically what's driving the solenoid things. Okay. Now go over it very carefully to the high voltage. There's two test points but you got to be careful don't touch anything is a couple hundred volts if you start getting shocked I'll kick you really hard and knock you on the ground all right 246 volts now carefully move and check the other one perfect so it's 246 going in and it's being regulated down to 186 going out so we want to turn that down just a little bit so there's a potentiometer there 
Okay, now retest that second one again. 182. We can leave it there. That's probably good. It, it, it's designed to run on 190, but the displays like it. They last a little longer if you lower the voltage. So some people run them as low as like 170 just to get more life out of the glass. But uh, if you get them too low, if your glass is a little weak, you'll start getting flickering and, and bad-looking problems on the glass where it just doesn't look as good. So you know what that means, Joe? Ready to plug in more stuff. The the the, the voltage <laughs> regulation sections on the two voltage regulation sections on that board are just fine. We think the solenoid driver section is fine, but we don't know for sure. But yeah, we're ready to plug in more stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in this old MPU that's all eight up and just see if it boots or anything. Don't think it will, but it might. <laughs> so that's what we're going to try. So we'll show you. You know, this is basically what other people are going to run into if they try. Uh, an old machine that's been sitting around. So you can see that uh, Alkaline has ate up the bottom four inches of that board. It's one of the worst ones I've seen in a while, actually. Let me straighten the pins, trying to get the connector to go on. You can plug in the ones on the solenoid board too. So we're basically everything's hooked up now. We we tried to protect what we could by uh, unplugging the uh, some of the power inputs, and you can plug in the soundboard, Joe. Maybe it'll work for us. The squawk and talk. All right, the displays were still connected. They actually get five volts too, so you know that could have been a problem, but. All right, yeah, this could be a good little this, this be a good little example. Okay, up on the MPU, show them where the LED is, Joe. Down on the bottom, Ooh, right above right the battery. There you go. So that little LED should blink if it boots. See how it's not doing anything? That means that the board is not even getting 12 volts. 12 volts will lock that light on, and it needs it to make the light blink. So, the, but we know that there's 12 volts being created because it goes over to the solenoid board. But the reason that it's not getting 12 volts is because the connector over on the left is still really filthy or corroded or the pins are broken or whatever. So that board will never work without that. Now show them the LED on the uh, soundboard, Joe. Right here somewhere. I think it's to the left there, about halfway down. Yep. So that's an LED on the soundboard. That's the squawk and talk. So watch what happens when I turn it on. One, two, three, four. So it, it flashed like four times, something like that. That is a code to tell you which chip is screwed up on the squawk and talk. That may be what it does when it works fine. It may have came all the way up, but it probably is telling you chip U4 is bad or something like that. So we'll have to look that up. Joe, hit the red button on the soundboard. Let's see if it does a test. Nothing. Okay, so it, it's uh, that board is not booting all the way, probably. Or we did you did you solder the wires on the speaker yet? Yeah. Okay. We replaced the speaker on the previous video. It was all screwed up. Um, is the speaker plugged into the board? Is there a connector not plugged in, like a little two-pin connector uh, it's maybe? On, it's on there. It is on there? Okay. All right. So uh, basically our MPU is giving us problems, but really it's that connector over there. So let me show you a close-up of that. So the problem is this battery here on the bottom of the MPU starts leaking over time and just corrodes everything. And so there's alkaline damage all over the bottom of this board. So you can see why we can confidently say it wasn't going to boot all the way. It's pretty bad. Here, let me get you a good close-up of it for all you horror film fans. So that's what you've got going on. Look at that capacitor. I can still read it. it. looks like it says 104. And you can see that it's even just the traces all over the place. Okay, well, this is the section that the voltage comes in on that connector. And then it also uh, is the reset section. Look at that test point there. And so the reset section is the part that gets corroded first. And the reset is what happens when the thing first boots up. 
like it tries to send a reset signal up to the MP the uh, CPU chip. Look at that. This could be fixed. You can replace all these little parts. But this is a pretty uh, primo title. This is actually a really cool game. It's got a little more value to it than some of the other ones. So we're actually putting a brand new MPU in it because the uh, cost of the MPU board is uh, you actually will get back on a title of this caliber. The people that want to buy this are going to want a nice new MPU board in it. Look at all that damage. You got to remember too that there's a socket under that chip and that socket's going to have that same damage. That could be, all of that could be repaired though. You, you carefully take everything off, you sand it, you neutralize it with an acid, and then you, uh, you uh, uh, start carefully putting each piece back on, new pieces. Um, so it can be fixed, but we're going to go with a new one. However, if you put a new one on with these old connectors, you're just spreading the cancer to the new board. And that ain't really a great idea. Sometimes as well, this leaks down on this board and starts screwing it up. But on this particular machine, at least on the front, not much of that has happened. You can see a little bit, but that's more just stuff from the air, you know? So like the greening on those chips there. See how those don't look much better? That's not from the alkaline all the way down the board like that. That's just those chips do that after a while. But they'll probably work, so we'll find out. Okay, so we're going to pull off the connectors and replace them uh, with new pins and new connectors. All right, folks, so I've slowly been replacing the connector and putting all new pins on it. we got one left, so Joe's going to do it so we can show you how we do it. All right, so the first thing that we do, we cut the wire off. Now, just do one at a time, people. If you do more than one at a time, you're going to get confused where to go. You might think you can just look in the manual, and you can, but it takes a while. Now he's stripping the end of it just a little bit. So now he's going to get these these crimpers. Now these are special little deals here. He's going to take. Nice. You know where you could get these? He's going to take a little pin contact and put in the crimper, and then squeeze it twice, and it kind of ratchets and holds it in place. Now he's holding them upside down because he's right-handed. I'm left-handed, so I swapped the jaws around. Then it crimps it on there perfectly, and then slide it in by the orange one there on the end. Sliding the new pin in. All right. Now, Joe, we've cleaned. I cleaned that connector. Slide that connector on there, and then we'll see one more time if that board does anything before we do it. Now, normally you wouldn't necessarily do this because you might get the junk on the new connector, which isn't the best thing in the world, but I, I took a file and scraped the hell out of the pins. So... We'll see if it will do anything now with that one can, with that one uh, replaced. Nothing. That board's dead as hell. Yep. Wait a minute. It's got something on the display. The displays are actually trying to do something. I'm going to try it one more time. That's hmm, interesting. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's trying to do something, but plug in the lamp board down there, Joe. Maybe the board's booting, but it's not controlling anything. I didn't hear any of the solenoids come on, though, and it always turns on the... the uh, there's always the solenoid turns on. Yeah, they're already on all of the displays and stuff. Okay, so it's not booting. It's just tripping. All right, so we're going to carefully remove that board, and then we're going to put in the new Altec board. So here is the beautiful Alltech Systems MPU that replaces the Bally and the Stern MPUs. Look at that thing. What a beautiful piece of work that is. Here is the manual that comes with it. We have to tell it what game we're putting it in. Before you plug in the Ultimate MPU board, Review Table 1 on the last page of this manual to determine if the clock speed jumper needs to be changed for the game being selected. Okay, so there was a different clock speed on some of the, the Stern games. So on the right for all Bally games, and they, they are mounted on the right. So that's the first thing you check. If you go to alltechsystems.com, you can download this little manual. 
This is a version 9.2 board. Uh, if you have the old MPU board that you feel has the correct dip switch settings for game features, go ahead and make the feature dip switches the same as your old board. If you choose free play mode, now this part is very important. Very important, people. Pay attention. I know you've been ignoring us. If you choose free play mode, you will need to turn off the credit display game feature switch, which is typically switch 20 or 27, depending on the game. Okay? Now, what does that line mean? What do you think that line means, Joey? I wasn't paying attention. If you choose free play mode, you will need to turn off the credit display game feature switch, which is typically switch 20 or 27, depending on the game. Refer to your manual. What does that line mean? To me, when I read that, I thought it meant, well, I'm putting it on free play, so I don't want to leave the credit display on because uh, it's going to say the wrong number or something. I, you know, So you don't need that, so turn it off. So I left that on one time, just thinking, oh, it ain't that big of a deal. No, it won't work. The game won't credit, won't go on free play, won't do anything with that switch not turned off. So you need to make sure you turn that off if you're putting it on free play. Additionally, if you're setting the board for a Stern machine, you must set the game feature switches. Blah, 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 blah. It's not a Stern. Okay. Before plugging in the Ultimate MPU board, get a flashlight to get a good look at the connectors that are hanging in the top left corner of the head of the machine. Okay, Visually inspect the cables for broken wires or bad pins. If you see any damage, you will need to repair this before continuing. So that's what we just did. Inspect the pins for corrosion. If you find any corrosion, further action may be necessary. Corroded pins could prevent your new board from working properly because the signal can't get through. Now, make sure the 5-volt DC supply is functioning correctly. Remember, Joe? We, we did, did that. that, too. Yep. You only need to do this if you're using an old solenoid driver board. If you have installed a new Altec Systems Ultimate solenoid driver board, then move to the next page. Otherwise, continue the following steps. Uh, measure it. The voltage should be between 4.9 and 5.25 volts. Remember, ours was 5.17. Right in the sweet spot. Okay. Uh, mount the new board into the game, install the board by placing it on top of the plastic spacers, plug in the connector, blah, 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 blah. So now, but remember, it told us that we needed to set it up using the, the uh, last page. All right, Joseph, are you ready? Yep. So up on the switch is on, down is off. Wait, not that one. We're going to do the other one first. Yep. I'm getting ready. That this one. one. Yeah. So we look on here, and we find Medusa. Now, you'll notice they're not in order. That's because I think they're in order by release. Medusa is the third one is on, Joe, and the seventh one is on. Right. And then also, we are going to put it on free play, so put the first one on. So to put any of the Bally games on free play, you put the first one on. Uh, then turn off your credit display feature, which is either switch 20 or 27 of the game feature dip switches. We'll figure that out here in a minute. Now, for the, all the features of the game, there's all kinds of little settings. Three ball, five ball, where you get a replay, all of that. So what, what we usually do is just match this one. So turn on seven and eight. And then on the next one, the third one. The sixth, seventh, and eighth one. On the next one, the first one. The fifth, the sixth, the seventh, and the eighth one. On the next one, the first one. The third one, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. Okay, so basically we've told that one to act just like this one was acting. Now people have pointed out before, oh, it could be all wrong. Yes, it could. So make sure to check that on yours. Now, uh, we need to find that credit display one, though. So we're going to figure out which one in the manual uh, turns on the credit display. Okay, so I've pulled up the manual on ipdb.org. If switch 27 is on, it displays credits. Switch 27, Joe, you want to be off. So that's going to be the third one on the top set of displays. Oh, so top set of dip switches. All right. Oh, and we forgot to tell them about the, uh, the connectors. If you need. <laughs> if you need those connectors, the Molex connectors that we, re that we repinned, you can get those at twistywristarcade.com. Twistywristarcade.com. That's one of our buddies. He's cool. He sells all the Molex uh, parts and stuff. 
And if you need uh, the crimpers or that kind of stuff, those cool crimpers that we were using, uh, we uh, we bought on Amazon. They're like 20 bucks. So we've got a link to those on our website. So go to lionsarcade.com. He's, he's ratcheting them now, getting ready for the next ones. Go to lionsarcade.com. There's a link down below. There's a parts page on our website, and it shows a lot of the parts that we use whenever we rebuild things. You can go there and browse if you want. If you go through any of those links, it'll take you to Amazon on a lot of them. And if you go to Amazon, anything you buy on Amazon after clicking our link, it remembers that we sent you there. So whenever you go there and you buy a property on the beach in Miami, uh, it gives us 3% of your property on the beach in Miami. So if you're going to buy anything big, make sure to get it on Amazon after clicking our link. <laughs> so anyway, we've changed this switch, uh, turn tw switch 27 off. And uh, we're kind of ready to try to start the thing up. So let's go check it out. All right, so the power comes in and goes to the power supply on the bottom. We checked it. Then it comes up here to the solenoid board. We checked it. Then it goes over to the MPU and boots the MPU. The old MPU is so damaged with alkaline, we don't believe it would boot. So now we have a brand new MPU in it that we've set up for Medusa and uh, this may boot. Now, whenever it tries to boot, that little LED is going to flash. One time real quick, they call it a flicker, and then seven more times, okay? Now, sometimes these don't boot right off the bat because you've still got power problems or something, but we'll see if this one does. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, yeah. So the... I missed one of them in there because it was the that first one that was just a regular flash. It wasn't the flicker that we usually see. So uh, you might have heard the, all the stuff rolling around. That was it trying to reset everything. It was able to get those drop targets up. Joey's still cleaning. Um, it couldn't get those drop targets up. There's some kind of issue. It spread the flippers. Those are zipper flippers, the old Ted Zell design. It spread those. We have this display in the play field working. We've got the lamps twinkling. And we've got the score displays working. So the, the soundboard didn't really do much. Go ahead and hit the red button, Joe, see if we get any soundboard action. Okay, so it, it, that four flashes was telling us something on that. So, All right, folks, so a bunch of the lights aren't working, but we haven't even messed with the lamp driver board yet. We'll do that on the next video. Uh, but you know what? It's on free play, so we have grabbed a ball. So let's... Uh, Try to start it, Joe. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Try it again. Should be on free play. We must have some kind of problem with the switches or something. Extended play, like numbers, show to the gods. Let's see if that switch looks good. Nothing. On free play, that should be doing it. Hmm. Well, we can't get to do anything yet, but it is booted. It's up and trying. Um, try turning it off and back on, Joe, and let's see if it was. Let's see what it's doing with these drop targets. I think that was the noise we're hearing. I'll try to show both sets. Wow! Did you see the? Did a little, 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 little. There's a coil in there where it can actually drop the drop targets. So it it tried to set them all up and then it dropped them all one at a time. So it's kind of doing its thing. We'll figure out next time. We probably got some switch problems uh, where the start button won't even work, or it may not be able to see that the, the pinball's in there. Maybe it won't start then. Um, but there you go, folks. So we appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video. Make sure to give us a thumbs up for taking the trouble to film this. We didn't have to do all that, folks. This thing's really starting to come along. It's going to be awesome. So we'll see you on the next one. Don't forget, by the way, to check out my brother Donnie. We have our channel here. We do uh, video game, we do video games, arcade games, and pinball machines, uh, jukeboxes. Donnie does stuff more like vehicles and old old uh, buildings that we're renovating. But check his channel out too. I'm over there with him a lot of times. The link is down below. And we will see you on the next video where we hopefully can play this thing a little bit. Look, it's even got a high score. <laughs>